Hi everyone. Uh, today is going to be the first of probably a couple of videos uh, in this range, uh, specifically around benchmarking uh, Socket uh, 7 and Socket Super 7 uh, CPUs. So I have uh, a wide range of uh, CPUs. This is not all of them, um, but this is some of them that I want to test. Um, but the reason I want to do it is I specifically wanted to test slightly newer programs than what normally gets tested with these range of CPUs. Um, so often you see a lot of DOS benchmarks and uh, maybe early Windows programs and, you know, maybe Quake 2. But I'm after some slightly more modern uh, applications, uh, specifically uh, Quake 3, Unreal Tournament, uh, 3D Mark 2000, and a few like that. I would like to really find a, a direct draw or 2D RTS style game that has a good benchmark. Um, I haven't uh, found one yet, but I'm sure there are plenty out there. I used to play StarCraft a lot back in the day, so I would love to w wish I could benchmark StarCraft to actually try and uh, compare these CPUs. Um, but if anyone has any suggestions on 2D, direct draw, sort of DirectX 5, maybe DirectX 6 kind of 2D RTS games, I think that be, would be interesting to see uh, as well. But in these benchmarks, I'm specifically interested in uh, game performance slash floating point performance. And primarily my main reason for it is to really see what CPU you need to always beat a Pentium 233. So um, I, the, the Pentium was always seen as having the best floating point performance of the lot. And even the K62, for example, clock for clock is not as good as the um, 233. But what I'm hoping to find out is what CPU uh, is always going to beat the um, Pentium 233 MMX. And I'm not specifically interested in overclocked performance. I know that you can get the 233 up quite high, um, but really just looking at sort of stock performance. So anyway, I um, jumped on eBay and found uh, this motherboard. Actually, I was linked to this motherboard from Overclockers Australia um, and purchased it for a good price. And it uh, came with the motherboard and also uh, a Cyrex uh, PR333 CPU. So um, yeah, definitely, I already had one, um, but uh, this particular CPU I've never actually used before and uh, curious to see how it performs. So this particular model is a um, 250 megahertz running on an 83 megahertz front side bus. So this is a, uh, I think a DFI motherboard. Um, it's a Super Socket 7 with the BIA chipset. Um, you can uh, see it's got an AGP slot uh, ATX uh, power, whereas it's normal AT style. Um, and yeah, it's uh, quite a nice modern board. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get very far with it and I'll explain uh, that uh, shortly. So anyway, I installed the uh, CPU. Uh, it was already installed in the motherboard when I got it and I connected uh, this fan to it. Uh, I didn't put any thermal paste on normally with these uh, you don't need to, um, and I'm not convinced that you do need to, uh, but potentially it has caused an issue. So I installed it, put um, the uh, just the heatsink on without any thermal paste, and went into the BIOS, and I checked the temperature, and it recorded the CPU running at uh, 30 uh, degrees, uh, which I thought was pretty good. So anyway, um, the... Uh, motherboard booted fine. Uh, this motherboard I was told had been fully recapped but based on what I'm looking at I think only these four capacitors have been replaced. The rest are I think all um, standard from back in the day. Uh, and it was supposedly working um, and I, I got uh, I got some benchmarks out of it um, and, and then it uh, had some issues which I'll explain shortly. So I installed this with a Voodoo 3, 2000, uh, Voodoo 3 3000. Um, that's uh, the, the reason I want to use that uh, video card is for uh, 
hopefully uh, 3D Now performance, um, and also uh, the 3DFX cards have slightly lighter weight drivers from my understanding. So I'm hoping that it gives sort of the best performance for these sort of lower end CPUs. Anyway, Windows booted up, installed all the, the uh, four and run one drivers for the VIA chipset, um, all the Voodoo drivers, everything installed perfectly fine. Um, I was playing around with it, no problems. Um, I then did a Quake 3 benchmark. So I benchmarked Quake 3 just using the demo um, at 640 by 480 using the normal default preset. And um, with the PR333, I got 19 frames a second, which I think is a bit better than I was expecting. Um, there's no sound card installed, and I know that can slow performance down. But it seemed um, that seemed actually for its Cyrex, you know, surprisingly acceptable. I will have to come back to you and tell you what the other chips get, and that will be in the, the a future video. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed good. So then the next uh, thing is I went and installed uh, uh, 3D Mark 2000 and tried to benchmark that. And probably at the last, very last benchmark, it crashed desktop. Now, I have seen that before in other, other um, computers occasionally, but it, it crashed the, the desktop. So I rebooted it and tried a couple of other things, and then the machine hard locked again. The next time I rebooted it, uh, Windows was corrupt, basically. So something had gone, gone wrong and it had corrupted the Windows install. So I jumped into the BIOS and noticed that the temperature sensor wasn't reading the right temperature. It basically had a question mark there and it was clearly the temperature sensor wasn't working anymore. You know, when I, when I was using it, I, I felt the heatsink and it definitely was making contact with the uh, motherboard because it was getting warm. Um, and I had another case fan blowing on, on the CPU. So I don't really think that's the cause, but I wasn't sure. So I, I took um, it out and um, applied thermal paste to the, uh, the motherboard. It's been cleaned off a bit now. I, uh, thermal paste to the CPU and um, uh, powered it up and started installing Windows from fresh because it had motherboard had uh, the, the Windows install had fully corrupted and I couldn't fix it. So after I did that, uh, partway through the install, it crashed again. So I thought, okay, well, maybe the CPU is, is uh, not happy. Either it's you know, running too, I cooked it, running too hot, not sure what's going on. Uh, and this particular CPU runs at the 2.9 volts. So I uh, installed this uh, K6 to 400. Now this particular one runs at 2.2 volts. So I was ma made sure to uh, test, uh, make sure to set the motherboard to 2.2 volts. Anyway, I powered it on and smelt a burning smell. Um, and uh, that's never good. So I uh, quickly turned it off and uh, pulled out the motherboard and double checked the voltage. And from what I can see, um, these uh, all, this is where you set all the dip switches. It is configured correctly to 2.2 volts. So I was a bit confused, but I thought I'd totally cooked the CPU. Anyway, on closer inspection, um, I found that it was actually this, from what I can see here, this MOSFET has um, gone, as you can see there. So uh, it actually looks like uh, that is the, the motherboard that's gone. So I'm actually hoping that the CPU is actually okay. I haven't had a chance to test it in another board. I'm not super game. I have quite a few K6-2s, um, but I actually suspect the CPU is okay. So this brings me to uh, what the cause of that was. Now, uh, the motherboard had been recapped in, in these four there. Um, the power supply I was using in a Pentium 4, uh, sorry, a Pentium 2 400, uh, and it was working fine. Um, so either this was a, a fluke and it had just uh, crapped out or uh, maybe I uh, overheated it by not putting thermal paste on the CPU and the um, heatsink. Um, or it was just a fluke and maybe it was having issues the whole time and maybe that's why it was unstable. Um, so I don't actually know the cause for it, unfortunately. 
Uh, but uh, look, I've got another motherboard on order, and so that will be, um, you know, my my goal. So what I've got in terms of CPUs, uh, my original computer back in the day was a Pentium One Three Three, so that's the first one I want to test. Then I got from a friend this Cyrex uh, PR uh, Two Hundred uh, CPU, um, and I, I tried it and it, the performance was worse than the Pentium 133, and so I went back to the 133. But looking back at the motherboard I was running, I suspect that this was not running at the full, uh, the full speed. Now, I think this one actually is meant to run at 166 megahertz, I believe. Um, I think it's, a, or no, maybe it was 150 megahertz with a, 75 megahertz front side bus. I'm not actually sure the specific speed it was running at, but I suspect it was running down clocked at maybe 133 megahertz or something like that. So I suspect I wasn't getting the full performance out of it. So I do want to test this again running at the, the proper speed. I'm also curious to see if the uh, MX model uh, really makes any difference other than the increase in performance, uh, uh, increase in megahertz. So that one I want to test as well and see how it goes. Um, obviously I've got the 233 megahertz, um, Pentium, uh, MMX. I've also got this slightly faster Cyrex. So this runs a hundred megahertz front side bus. So it's still 250 megahertz, but it, it's, um, hundred megahertz front side. So that's the fastest Cyrex I have. So that one I wouldn't mind testing. Um, I will hopefully test the, um, PR333 again. And then I have a whole range of K62s running from, I think, 300 megahertz up to 550 megahertz. So what I'm out of this whole thing, I really want to try and find what K62 do I need to run uh, at at what clock speed to always beat the 233 um, Pentium MMX. Um, but yeah, no, I'm going to test a, a range of CPUs and and see how they perform. Um, and I'm, look, I am hoping to repair this motherboard. I have purchased um, what I suspect are knockoff MOF sets from um, AliExpress. I couldn't find this exact uh, model number, unfortunately. Um, so I have ordered some, but I don't have great soldering uh, skills or tools. So this is probably a little bit outside of what I can do myself. Um, so if anyone knows of a company in Sydney, Australia that does uh, motherboard repairs, I would be very interested because I'd love to get this board working again. Um, I suspect that, I, I assume this is the temperature sensor for the CPU, I suspect that's gone as well. Um, but that is the only only issues I can see, so I'm, I'm hoping this board is um, salvageable. That is the problem with some vintage retro computing hardware. Um, you know, when, when stuff dies, you can't necessarily replace it. So I am hoping to repair this one in future. Anyway, that wraps up the uh, sort of first video in hopefully a couple of uh, videos about this topic. Um, I'll link a Vogon's Wiki article I've started on benchmarks uh, with the Cyrex um, Quake 3 benchmarks that I was able to get out of it before I cooked the motherboard. Um, and I will update that once I have uh, this other motherboard that I've ordered uh, from the Ukraine. So that will take a few months to get here, probably. Uh, I do have some other SIS-based um, so Super Socket 7 boards, but they're not, they don't have AGP, so it won't necessarily be a direct comparison, but that's something that I will look into. Anyway, I hope uh, this has been somewhat interesting, and um, I will hopefully do a few more videos in the coming months. Thanks, bye.